Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Yo Yo Man with Barnsley in today's episode. We've played through the entirety of the summer transfer window. We have made plenty of new sign-ins and plenty of money in sales. Let's see how you think we've done. As you can see then 10 new incomings on the ins and 13.75 million brought in through sales. Let's take a look at who has left the club first. Bambo Diaby has left to join Alaves in the Spanish first division. He got sold for a fee that could rise to eight and a half million pounds. And whilst that doesn't seem like an absolutely fantastic deal and he could have very easily been a starter in our squad, the amount of money we've got at Barnsley is incredibly poor. So we can't be picky in regards to fees that we can receive for players. So I thought it was a good bit of business to get that much money in purely down to the fact that we needed that money to be able to reinvest into the squad. And a similar situation happened with Cameron McGeehan, who went and joined Brentford for £6 million. He was one of our starting midfielders last season, but I wanted the money. <laughs> he was the first sale, and I really could have used the money then. So I'm happy to see him leave the club as well for that sort of fee. He could have easily been in our first-team squad, but he's left. Toby Sibic went and joined Sunderland for £675,000. A decent third choice right back, but he never really had an effect on the first team squad last season. Same could be said for Luke Thomas, who joined Middlesbrough for £300,000. A right midfielder who found himself well down the pecking order. And he's left the club. And a few loans who you don't really care about. Let's move to the ins. The first of which is Sheffield United legend Sebastiano Esposito. He has joined the club for the long term. Well, for the long term. For a season long loan from Inter Milan. And I anticipate this boy being our starting striker. You know, I was um, trying to force Corley Woodrow into the first team squad last season to try and raise his value with the looks to sell. That hasn't happened during the summer. So I'm going to stick with Esposito, I think. He is the better striker. He's better suited to our system. He's piercier. He's got the clinical finish. And he's got all of that room to improve over the course of the season. So you will be seeing a lot of this boy. We have already played two games to start the season as the transfer window didn't finish until them games have been played. So we'll review them afterwards as well. But Esposito has started beautifully. David Batella was another loan signing coming in from Atlanta. He's going to be our first choice centre-back. You can see a sort of pattern here. I'm not that bothered about getting players in on a permanent transfer because I just want us to get promoted in this season. And maybe we've done enough to do that. Maybe we haven't. But he is a fantastic centre-back. And I had him with Sheffield United as well. Uh, I know his physicals can improve massively. Mentally, he's already there. Technically, he is as well. He's more than capable of playing at the championship at the top end. So hopefully, he can help us get promoted alongside Esposito. Gonzalo Ramos from Benfica, um, an attacker midfielder. He is going to replace Bruno Costa as I was starting attacker midfielder. He can play up front should he be required, but that's not somewhere I see him. He's got a model citizen personality. So given the game time, given the trading, he should improve massively over the course of this season. And at four star, five star, he's already one of the best players at the club. So three loan signings to start with, all of which will be in our first 11 and hopefully you know, could help us get out of this league. Alongside another loan sign, and this time it's a fee-paying loan of Reese Nelson. Very similar in terms of Jordan Ibe when he came in last season. He could be the one who gets us promoted single-handedly. You know, he's absolutely fantastic. He's classed as a wonder kid. He's four and a half star, five star potential on loan from Arsenal, who we have managed in the last save. And we know he can produce the goods should it be required. So he will be our starting left winger as an inverted winger. And hopefully... He will do the business. Next up, our first permanent signing of the summer was Dimitri Basoli. He's a deep lying playmaker in the defensive midfield position, and he will be our starter there. And he has started fantastically, by the way. Already worth £9 million after signing him for a free. It seemed like a bit of a no brainer to me. And he replaces basically Cameron McGeehan in the squad, who was sold for £6 million. So getting in six, signing for free, seemed like an ideal bit of business for us. Next up was Dees Kasinga Medea. We signed him, to, uh, our, we didn't sign him, our head of youth development signed him, he's going to sit in the under 23s, he's absolutely dreadful. Let's move on, Jake Foster Caskley, this is the one I was talking about, we've signed him purely because we were lacking in central midfielders and defensive midfielders. I hope this boy never sees the pitch for Barnsley, but if he does, I think he's decent enough to be able to see us through. Probably he's a league one player, and he's classed as a decent player for most Skybet championship sides, I don't personally say that, but... Again, he has come in and he's going to remain on the bench or in our squad and hopefully never sees the light of day. 
Next up was our new first choice keeper, Jamal Blackman, was signed from Chelsea. An English player for £800,000 is nothing to sniff at, particularly one who's approaching their prime. Our options for goalkeepers was limited, to say the least, but I think he's more than good enough for the championship. At three stars, he's classed as a good player for most Skybet championship sides, and he has that little potential of room to grow. Next up was our replacement for Bambo Diaby, Marcel Tisserand for £1.3 million. A 27-year-old, not necessarily the sort of age I pinpoint when I'm looking to make new signings, but I felt like uh, he brought in a little bit of experience into the squad. Looking at his physicals, he's absolutely fantastic. He's well-rounded. He's apparently got some potential, which I don't believe. But at three and a half star, he's a leading player for more Skybet Championship side. So between him and David Patella, I'm hoping they can really, really form a solid two at the back. And that could see us keep a lot of clean sheets this season. And finally, was a panic signing. Let's have a look and see why. Um, Miko Albanoz, I was starting left back. Is out for seven months. He broke his lower leg. So that was ideal. So we panicked <laughs> and we signed Tony Herrero for three and a half million pounds. That is a huge sum of money for Barnsley to be spending on anybody. But I know Tony Herrero can become a very, very good player on Football Manager. Not on any of me saves. I've seen him previously um, develop into a top Premier League player. Even a middle table Premier League player would be enough for us. So given enough game time in the first season, I'm hoping he can well and truly develop quickly, get himself as one of the first names on the team sheet and really, really develop into a Premier League player which we might need for next season or the season after. So as you can see now, we have a bit of a massive squad. Um, you'll see me starting 11 when we come to the Reading game, which is going to be the game for today. And speaking of games, we've already played two and they've been absolutely fantastic. The first of which was a 3-0 home win against Preston. And now I remember this game last season because uh, I think we drew... <laughs> I know we didn't win against Preston last season at home. That is the main takeaway. Uh, Bissoli from the penalty spot in the 50th minute. Arjen van der Heerde in the 83rd minute. And Esposito in the 93rd. Giving us the three goals and the three points. Next up was an away match against newly promoted Ipswich. And we absolutely smashed them 5-0. Gonzalo Ramos, uh, one of our new loan signings, getting two goals today. Alex Moat, Ben Williams and Esposito getting himself another goal. Uh, two games, two goals for Esposito, which is absolutely fantastic to see. Some really, really good performances in this game, particularly from our attacking players. And after them two games, as you would imagine, we currently sit top, well, not top, second in the table, joint top with West Ham. West Ham got relegated, that's right. Um, Aston Villa also joined them, getting relegated. Who else got relegated? Oh, Crystal Palace got relegated as well. So we've got some of the bigger teams coming down, particularly West Ham. They're going to be one of the bigger sides in the table. We are unlikely to be able to topple them in the league but I am aiming for qu automatic qualification <laughs> from the championship this season you might not think it based on the signings and stuff we have um, not so much downgraded but we have sold some first team players we've still got a little bit of room to manoeuvre in terms of the transfer budget and the wages available the board siphoned a lot of the transfers that were made some of them were only 65% uh, of transfer revenue available I did negotiate that just before the Bambo Diaby deal to increase that to 80%. But again, the board have siphoned some of that money off us. So we haven't been able to spend quite as much as you might have thought based on the outgoings. So this is pretty much our strongest starting 11 in my opinion. And this is what you're going to say quite a lot. The only one who is missing is Dimitri Kovaria. Our right back is currently injured for about three weeks. He would usually be starting over Jordan Williams who starts today. But... Other than that, everything else is full strength. Jamal Blackman in goal, as we're saying, new signing at the club. David Patella and Tissa Rand as our new centre-backs, along with Tony Herrero, who is maybe a little bit worse than Williams at left-back, but I need to give him the game time, and he's going to get it this season. Uh, Dimitri Basoli, our new signing in a defensive, uh, defensive midfield. Alex Mort stays at the club, there was no interest in him, so he starts as our central midfielder. Arjen van der Heerde has been just developing absolutely beautifully, just take a look at that. Hopefully, over the course of the next six months or so, he will become natural at the right wing role and he, his performances improve as a result. But he's already got one goal and three assists in two games, so we can't complain with that. Gonzalo Ramos, Reese Nelson and Esposito are leading the line. It's a strong squad, in my opinion. The loan signings have made the biggest amount of difference. I think they are the sort of players we need to get out of the championship. So let's give them a chance today. Redden are the opposition. They did finish in the playoffs last season, as if you can remember, and they were one of our key battles 
pretty much every time. I think I played them twice in live cons. And they were, they were a very good side and we struggled against them. So this is a good litmus test as to how good this squad is. How good it's going to perform over the rest of the season. And let's get into it. First highlight of the game, three minutes in. It's Moat with the corner. Gonzalo Ramos scores close at the back post. Another highlight now. Moat uh, switches the play to Reese Nelson on this left-hand side. He goes back to Tony Herrero. His debut today. Esposito back to Herrero. Back to Van der Heerde. Uh, was that the highlight? It was a blocked shot from Van der Heerde. John Will uh, Jordan Williams continues the attack though. Van der Heerde is in the box. He crosses it in. And Sebastiano Esposito gets his third goal of the season. I think these two are going to perform... Uh, not perform... They're going to get a really, really prolific partnership going. We've already seen it in the first three games. Hopefully it continues, but it's very nice to see. And Esposito, one of our old boys, I would have loved to have been able to sign him permanently. But we don't have 15 million sitting about. So uh, his third goal of the season, Barnsley won, red and nil. Great start. Corner from us, a set piece maybe, a set piece goal. Moat plays it in. Oh, Esposito. <laughs> the post denies Esposito. How many times have we seen that over the course of last season? Not necessarily Esposito, but coming really, really close. The first half an hour has been absolutely delightful for us going by the match stats. We are dominating a very, very strong red inside who performed great in the season last season. So even though we're only 1-0 up, I am incredibly pleased with how this game is going. No need to make any changes at half time. We will just kick back off for the second half and see how our boys do. Now, obviously, with the loan signings, our, the age of our squad has been reduced dramatically. Um, a lot of uh, they're, they're still teenagers, most of them, but they are teenagers who probably could do better than our squad. So hopefully they can do the business as Esposito comes down the right hand side, finds Reese Nelson at the back post. It's a good block by the defender, and we can't keep it alive. I'm hoping to see more from Reese Nelson. In the first three games, he's been the one who hasn't um, performed quite as much as the others. So hopefully, over the course of a season, he becomes a little bit more familiar with the tactic and a little bit more comfortable in the squad. As Redden come forward now with Obita on this left-hand side, it's clear by Herrero. And maybe we can break with Ayan van der Heerde. Long ball over the top. The pace of Esposito was in behind. And it's a good save by the keeper to keep it at 1-0. Another highlight now. Mawat with the corner. It's played in. It's cleared though. With 20 minutes to go, we will look to make some subs. Reese Nelson's not really performing out there. So we're going to switch him with Ayan van der Heerde. And we're going to bring on Malik Wilkes on that right-hand side. Wilkes... Um, He's transfer listed. <laughs> he was being a pain in the arse over the summer for asking for a new contract. So he is transfer listed uh, by request. And he could potentially leave the club. Still valued at £8.5 million. Maybe one of the clubs in Europe take a chance on him. But as things stand, he's probably going to stay for until uh, at least January. And we'll make up the final two subs of the game. We'll bring on Bruno Costa and Ben Williams for Gonzalo Ramos and uh, Tony Herrero respectively. And with two minutes to go, we have another highlight. It is us on the attack, which is nice to see. We're still only 1-0 up, which is a little bit surprising, um, given how dominant would be according to the match stats. Don't give the ball away in the midfield, because Redden have got two up front, and they will counter us without mercy. And Ben Williams gives the ball away, just as I've said, and Puskas is in behind now. He's only got one man to beat, and he beats the keeper. This is... <laughs> Barnsley 1, Redden 1. Let's just move on. And yes, I was still on attack, and, but, you know, we were dominant in this game and I thought we would have had enough to see off Redden today, but we haven't managed to do it. Barnsley won, Redden won, a 90th minute equaliser, crushing our hopes and dreams. Ugh, well, it's still been a decent start. It's still a good start. But with that draw, we dropped to fifth place in the table. In terms of our board expectations, by the way, we are still only um, expected to finish in the top half. So we have plenty of room to be able to slip up and still not be be um, sacked by Barnsley. So uh, promotion is still the unofficial target, but the official target is just top half. West Ham next? It's got to be. Anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.